a video about a chicken bean minestrone style soup uh, stew uh, that I cook in jars, these jars, uh, and I always have in the fridge or in the cupboard as a, as a, as a quick meal uh, so I don't have to defrost anything or make anything uh, if I'm a bit rough of time. So we'll quickly go through the ingredients um, and what we're going to do with them. We're going to chop everything up. I'm not going to do it in front of the camera. I'm going to show you how to chop it up in front of the camera, but not chop all of it up because there's quite a lot of veg. Uh, so celery, uh, we need to be careful with celery because um, down the insides of the celery, it gets bits of, of dirt and grime. So we kind of need to wash in there and in there. Carrots are fine. We just look them over. We're going to chop, take the ends off um, and then chop them up. That's fine. Sun-dried tomatoes. Um, save drain off the drain off the oil and save it it's got loads of flavor in it and we can use it elsewhere so sun-dried tomatoes chili seeds as well uh, i've slowly 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 uh, got my tolerance up of chilies over the years and i now like the seeds in them you don't have to add the seeds so that's fine you can just use the flesh but we'll, we'll go through the process of, of those ginger skin on there's no point wasting the skin there's loads of flavor in there um, same with the carrots. I'm not going to. I'm not going to peel the carrots. There's loads of flavour in the carrot skin as well. So uh, we're just going to take maybe take off a few bits of blemishes and and, and bits that are broken, um, but the rest will uh, will work. We'll just leave the skin on. Butternut squash. Same with the butternut squash. Top and tail. It take the top off. Take the bottom off. So it's a bit more secure. We'll save the seeds. Uh, we'll leave the skin on. Uh, get rid of that that little thing there. Maybe that little thing there. But it's, uh, there's loads of flavour in the skin and it's a different texture as well. So we'll keep that. Um, different types of beans that I've got. Uh, I've got some cannellini beans and I've got some butter beans and they are just like a uh, source of protein and a bit of a bulking agent so those are the good and cheap as well so they'll go in uh, that would be nice. And with some leeks. Uh, I've, I've cut a little bit of the leeks off already um, but these as you can see, can you see, yes you can, those bits there they're just blemishes they are, uh, on, the, on, the, on the leaf. Is it a leaf? They're just blemishes there's nothing wrong with that, that's perfectly fine. And I like a lot of the green as well, because it's nice and spicy. The only thing you have to be careful with leeks is the dirt that gets in them. You have to wash them really well. And then we've got some chicken. Uh, it is um, leg meat chicken, so it's thighs and drumsticks. Um, I'm not really a fan of breast. I like the, uh, the leg meat because it's got more flavor and it holds together a little bit better. Uh, and it's got a bit more uh, gelatin, like gelatin in it, so it, um, it adds more flavor to the uh, soupy stewy uh, thing that we're making. Uh, and I think that's it. I think I'm sure that's all the ingredients. I think, I can't see anything else. Can't think of anything else. We'll add as we go. So we'll move some things out of the way and then we'll get chopping and I'll show you what kind of uh, prep we kind of do. Do I need to pause or just move things out of the way quickly? We'll just move things out of the way quickly. I'm not a fan of editing. That's fine, so I've already washed that one. That can go there. That can go there for a minute. That can go there. Chicken out of the way. So, look at your celery. I washed this one already, so it's fine. You just need to, uh, that's a bit dry at the top, so just take that off. <clears throat> Do it about halfway down. Thin apart in half. And along there, there. And like that. The long batons. There and then fingers like a claw, and then so the the only thing you're gonna the only thing you're gonna cut off is the ends of your fingers. So you keep them out of the way. So it's like that you can't see. So it's like we're gonna be holding like that. So the knife's gonna go up and down that bit of your finger. And as long as you don't lift it up too high, you can't see that I have. Well, you can't see, but I have uh, taken the ends of my fingers off in the past. So, that out of the way, and then we go there. So, it doesn't have to be too neat. Don't have to be too chefy about it. So, that there. And then repeat the process with the rest of the celery, which I'll do later. I'm not going to add any herbs into this. It's been cooking for a long time, and it'll just. Uh, They'll just get a bit grey and a bit brown and, and lose all the flavour. Carrots, top and tail. Looks fine carrot. So,
I've done it that way and then it gives you a flat surface to work on. I'd advise you to then do it like that because it's not rocking about so you've just taken that first end off. So then, there, 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 that in half, those in half, another one like that, get that into three, that has to be completely uniform, and then dice that as well. I did wash the carrots before I started. I certainly have to wash things a lot more thoroughly these days. So they can live with the carrots for the moment. And then we'll do the bottom up. So that's a different button. Is that the same one? Yes, the same one. I've got two. I'll write all the ingredients down and the uh, and the weights and measures and things. So top and tail. There's no flavour there, so we're not going to use that. I can go on the compost and then there. So, got it in two parts, both sturdy. Uh, anything longer than that starts to be a little bit unwieldy. So, same kind of <coughs> principle. We go down, we've got it on a flat surface, so it's secure. Go down again, and again, again. Like that. Then, to the end, we've got three of those in a stack. Bathrooms again and then dice. This is the top of the button up, which is just slightly different to the bottom because the bottom's got the seeds in. We're going to save the seeds and we're going to dry them out and then we can use them in something else. I'm making bread today. I have something for making bread. Um, but I put the uh, the dried butternut squash seeds into the bread so it's going to be really nice bread. It's not for me, I'm going to give it away because I'm getting a load of apples for free. So that's the top of the button up. I'll do that a bit and then the bit with the seeds so straight through as you can see we've got seeds so we'll scrape them out into a plate that there maybe I should have used a spoon a bit fine what we're doing it looks like it's all the seeds and there and we'll just pry them away the flesh. Uh, I'll leave the seeds on the plate and then I'm going to put them in the sunshine inside but on a sunny, sh on a sunny shelf sunny shelf sunny uh, window ledge and then um, and then they're going to dry out once they need to be properly dry out like no moisture in them left whatsoever any kind of moisture and uh, they'll, they'll go off so but leave them in the sunshine and they'll dry out completely and then you can use them as snacks or as ingredients <coughs> we'll just take that off that's a bit I don't, I don't want to eat that. It's just a bit, yeah. But we'll use that. That'll be fine. So seeds out of the way. Bottom half of the butternut, like that, and we'll make moon shapes. It is if you find you haven't got knives that are sharp enough to cut through the skin, then by all means peel the butternut. But I think it's flavour, and I'm not going to waste it. And a different texture as well, and that's kind of what you want in things, you want flavour and texture. So, down, let's see. Like there. There. That's that, so that's half a button not done, we're not going to do the rest. Chili, just running out of room. So, it looks fine, it's been washed. So, top off, miss the compost bin. In half with a knife, and then seeds in or seeds out. Seeds in for me, uh, and then I just think in half again, like that, and then knife across it. Now, if your knives aren't what I found with peppers and chilies and things like that, if your knives aren't too sharp, if you cut from the inside the flesh side rather than trying to cut through the skin first, you'll find that it cuts through easier. So if you more difficult to cut through the skin that way, much easier to cut through that way. If you know it's that, that sharp. So then we'll just make little rings. Don't touch your face or your fingers. Or lick your fingers after you've got chilies or touch anything where else on your body that might be a little bit sensitive. You know what I mean. Otherwise it will start to burn. If it starts to burn, just use a bit of yoghurt.
or a bit of milk and that will neutralize it so what we'll do is we'll add that the chili because we're running out of space to the um, chicken just off camera can't see it but we'll bring up the board you can see it now this is just gonna when we put everything in the jars it's just easier to do it this way I have found so next is ginger ginger looks fine that's not I'm using two bits of ginger that was ginger's fine can't see there's nothing let me just take the end off ginger wants to be um, bite bite on a regular basis uh, if you leave it in the fridge it tends to go a bit stringy and a bit old quite quickly not quickly quickly but in a week it'll start to get old like fibrous at the end can you see those fibers not really fibers at the end but we're going to mince that using a um, sieve like one of them I can't I don't forget what it's called grater it's like a hand grater use a grater uh, use a grating box by all means uh, so I'll check it the right way and then we're going to grate it straight into over the chicken like that takes a bit of work it's even harder if the ginger's old so it wants to be nice fresh plump ginger not dried out nice and shiny you can see so it's mincing through I just find that I like it when it's minced uh, it's fine to chop it up but um, I just find that if it's minced it, uh, it the flavor gets all the way through the stew so that's enough of that so scrape those off we'll do a bit more ginger off camera although I'm sure somewhere there is the veg chopping channel this will not be the veg chopping channel that in there that one there that one there I'm not out of the way too much because I need it then we'll do the dried tomatoes drain the uh, the oil off I keep it in the fridge just so it lasts a little bit longer the oil that is there we go and then serrated knife and I'm doing it on a plate uh, it's an old serrated knife so I'm not really bothered about it but if I do it on the chopping board all the oil and juice tends to soak into the chopping board uh, which I don't really like the look of so that's the only reason I'm doing it onto a plate so what I do is I tend to stack three uh, sun-dried tomato petals up and then into batons again holding it fingers out of the way that doesn't have to be perfect because these aren't therefore it doesn't and then that way so we're going to create a small dice and we're going to add that to the chicken as well and then mix it all around and then it'll evenly distribute I can get an, uh, uh, the same amount into the jars that we're going to use we'll talk about the jars and what you need to do to them that's that so that can get added into the chicken I need to wash my fingers that goes into the chicken and we'll mix it all around once I've chopped everything else up and added everything that's in there like that that out of the way that can go out of the way now wet fingers and then leeks uh, which are not the easiest things in the world I probably need another board I probably need to clear the board I will clear the board Now, so yeah, so leeks, um, there's lots of dirt in them. You need to be careful. Um, you just, you're gonna cook it, it's not gonna harm you. It's just, just not, particularly, not particularly nice to eat when you're crunching, when you're eating through something and you get that crunch of, of dirt. It's just not particularly nice. So I have taken the ends off um, that were a bit rough. Uh, I'm gonna leave that on for the moment. There's a few blemishes on the skin, but it's just blemishes. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not fine. Uh, for home use, that's fine i'm not sure if i was serving other people it uh, uh the guests um i brought my color i might be a little bit funny about that but that's fine so completely in half just be brave get rid of that half 
so all the dirt will be in these leaves down the bottom so we need to chop it and then we're going to wash it you can't really get rid of like you can see there's all the dirt there and then the leaves there you can just chop that off but i just think there's loads of flavor in it it's nice and peppery and there's loads of flavor so i don't want to waste that so i'm just going to chop it all up and i'm going to wash it a couple of times in in warm water um and then strain it out uh, strain the leaks out of the water rather than drain the water away so strain the leaks out of the water uh, using one of these using one of those so I'll catch all the, the leaks out of the top of the water all the soil will go down to the bottom of the water um, and then you pull the water away leaks back in and then repeat the process again and then it'll get rid of all the um, it'll get rid of all the dirt that's the best way. You can't drain the water off and then take the leaks out because the, the, the dirt will still be there. So uh, leaks float, dirt doesn't. And there you go, today's top tip. So this is going to be a bit awkward as it always is. So long that's on again. It's quite rustic is the word I'm going to use. So you can see all the dirt in there it's a bit big that's a bit big that's a bit big that's a bit big okay. so same process as before uh and remembering if uh, the dirt will get onto your chopping board so you need to wash the chopping board after you've um you've you've chopped your leeks so bunch them all together and then go down like that And it's just a nice size, a nice edible size. That's kind of what the sizes that we're aiming for are something that you can put on a spoon into your mouth. Anything bigger than that. I don't want to have to chop everything up. It's going to be eaten out of, I generally eat it out of the jar like an animal. But uh, it's just a nice, easy thing to have in the fridge or in the cupboard. I am experimenting at the moment <clears throat> and I have some jars of it in the cupboard and they've been there for two and a half months. So um, I've got a few jars, so I'm. Every month I'm testing them to see how long they last in the uh, in the cupboard rather than keeping them in the fridge. So that's that. So we'll give that a wash. And I'll chop the rest of the veg. I need to talk about beans. So we'll just finish that off. Get it down to the end. And there. I'm not going to eat that. That's fine. Could do. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I think we will actually. Use resolution. Take that off, take this, the dry bit off, and we'll just go through it. It's just a root. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just uh, it's just a root, and it's fine. It's just a different texture. That's all. So that's that. Beans. Got a mixture of beans uh, because we like different things. So I don't know how to pronounce that. Roast cocoa. Roast cocoa. I don't know. Got some of those beans. Got some cannellini beans. I've got some butter beans. Um, I did used to add um, kidney beans, but I find them a bit they're cheap. I just find them a bit bland, and I think I'd, cannellini beans and, and butter beans are. Uh, I've got more flavour to them. I do, maybe I'm just sick of kidney beans. I just find them a bit bland, really. So those are the beans I'm going to use. Um, three, three tins, maybe four, maybe five, depending on uh, quantities and how things work out in the jars. But I will uh, chop everything up which will take, I don't think it'll take that long, chop everything up and then we'll come back and we'll talk about jars and putting things in jars and cooking things in jars uh, and preserving. It's, it's not for everyone, uh, but I, it's something quite fun that I like to do. Fun. Is it what is that? Yeah, we all like different fun things, don't we? There we go. That's it for now. Right, I have uh, chopped all the veg. I have mixed the uh, carrots, the butternut, the leeks and the celery together in one pan and I have filled uh, the jars that I'm going to use half full with that vegetable mixture and then I'm going to put um, the chicken, the chilies, the ginger and the uh, sun-dried tomatoes uh, as the next layer. I'm going to split that between the 16 jars and then I'm going to top up with more vegetables and then I'm going to put the beans on top of that. I'm not entirely, I'm, I don't know if there's going to be enough mixture to go around, so I will bulk it out with the uh, with the beans because I can just open up another jar, uh, what, another tin, uh, and kind of just top them up that way. 
a quick mention, uh, a quick mention about uh, the jars. Because I'm going to cook things uh, in the jars, uh, I'm not going to cook something and then put it in the jar. I'm actually going to cook it in the jars. They just need to be clean. They don't need to be sterile. They just need to be clean. Hot soapy water. Give them a scrub out. Make sure you go around all the all the the lip there into all the crevices with a with a scourer and get any bits of debris out. Clean hot soapy water and then rinsed in hot water and then that be sufficient. Any and then even if there is any bacteria in there because we're going to heat the uh, jars up to uh, or over uh, 90 degrees it's going to kill anything that's in there so that's that's fine uh, so just nice clean jars um, there are locations where you have to sterilize jars this it's just a little bit pointless a note on the lids the lids need to be clean and free of rust or anything can you see could you have seen that that's the jar there I wasn't paying attention to the camera but those are the bits that you just need to Pay attention to it in there. Just give those a good scrub. The lids need to be clean and blemish, ble blemish free, uh, like that one. No signs of rust, no signs of food debris in them whatsoever. No signs that the seals have been are starting to get a little bit worn. That's what they look like. You can just see that mark there. They start to go a little bit rusty. That's not suitable for preserving. Um, it will be okay for dried products. Um, that's fine at a push, but I would never use that um, for, for something that I was going to cook and preserve into a jar because it's just the rust is going to get worse and it's going to go off and it'll taint it. And then also this one here, I don't think you can see, you might just be able to catch it, but there are the seals just starting to go, which is which is okay. If I was if I was really desperate, I would I would use that. If I was really desperate but I'm not desperate so I'm not going to use that and if I was going to use that I would make sure that that was one of the first jars that I used uh, rather than leaving that to the back of the cupboard I'd put that jar at the front so I used that first and keep an eye on it um, that type of thing so that's about jars and lids so I'll just quickly go through I'm going to take a spoonful of the chicken mixture into the jar about two spoonfuls like that. I'm going to go around all the jars do the same and eat, uh, put a little bit in and then if I've got some left and they'll go around the jars that maybe look like they need a little bit more and then vegetables on top, pack it down, then uh, beans. So I'll come back after I put all the chicken uh, in and then we'll, uh, we'll put some vegetables in and pack it down. Right, the chicken is now in so I'm going to put some more vegetables in the top Put it over the pan so we don't lose any on the floor like that and then we're going to press it down i've layered it with vegetables and then chicken and then vegetables because if you put the chicken at the bottom uh, of the jar then it tends to stick to the bottom of the jar um, no matter how much liquid you put in it's always going to stick to the bottom of the jar so vegetables first they're not going to stick then chicken then vegetables on top and then press down I don't press down after i put the beans in because it just squishes the beans so press down and just compacts it that means we can get more in so press that down we'll go around with the rest of the uh, vegetables pressing it all down using that amount of vegetables in there go around press down any vegetables left just dot them around make sure everyone's got everything's got a nice equal mix and then we'll put the beans in and then we'll put some stock in and then we'll seal them up so another pause and then i'll come back with the vegetables pressed in Right, vegetables are in. Uh, next, I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning in, uh, into each one, so a little bit of seasoning. This, I'm using fresh stock, because um, that's what I've got. If, uh, and it's quite seasoned, so I don't need some much salt. People will probably comment about how much salt I'm putting in things, but I don't really care. It's my body, and you can do it with your body what you choose. So, a little bit of seasoning in. Beans next, just gently on top. Like that one, like that. Press them down a little bit, not too high up the jar, um, otherwise, uh, it uh, with the expansion and contraction of the jar and the content, the contents, not incontinent, the contents, uh, it just uh, you don't need to don't need to fill them too full. And then um, we're going to top them up with fresh stock. If I was using uh, stock cubes, I would use. Double the quantity. So if it said if it was a pint of uh, liquid, pint of water per stock cube, I would use two stock cubes. 
because I've used that stock cube as a seasoning. My stock is quite a good stock and it's got quite a lot of flavour to it. So today's top tip, we use two jugs when we're filling things up. Uh, we use one jug in the pan and then we pour from that jug into that jug, which is a nice clean jug, and then it's nice and easy and me relatively mess free to uh, pour things in. So I'll just fill up one. Just gently, what you have to do, is, because the bubble, well, again, air is going to escape from it from the bottom, uh, it's just going to bubble up. So you need to top up gently and then probably need to top up again just to get rid of all the air. Give it a bit of a shake, like that. See, give it a press down with clean fingers, obviously. That's fine, is that one? That looks like it doesn't need any more. No, there doesn't seem to be many bubbles. There's always going to be some, but there doesn't seem to be many bubbles. Then, wipe around the lip with a clean cloth, like that, just to get rid of any food debris. And then lid on the cloth, tight, and then that's ready to go. So I'll do the rest of them and then we'll put them in the pan and we'll talk about how we uh, cook um, jars in, uh, in, a, in a boundary of water. Jars in a boundary of water. How we cook things like this in a, in a boundary of water and, uh, and preserve things that way. It's, I don't, I don't, there must be a proper term for it. I don't know the term, or maybe I've forgotten. Um, but uh, I'll show you what we're doing rather than having the correct words because I'm a bit of an idiot at the times. But there we go. So I'll top up put them in the pan and then we'll come back for the next step. So the, um, I'm recording. Right, so uh, the first layer of jars are in the pan. And I put um, a cloth in the bottom of the pan because what tends to happen is that as the water gets up to temperature, the um, it tends to rattle the jars. Um, and if they're on the bottom, if the glass jars are on a metal bottom pan, um, it can start to crack and chip them, which is not what you want. So cloth on the bottom of the pan, first layer of jars, I put some water in, um, and then I'm gonna put another cloth on top, um, so the um, so the jars aren't dancing, like, it sounds like they're dancing in the pan. So the, so the jars aren't dancing in the pan, so another layer of cloth on top, just a cheap old cloth will be fine. I put cold water in because we're going to bring things. We're not, we, you want to bring things up uh, slowly to the boil. Uh, if you start boiling things like this quickly, there's a, you run the risk of um, the, the temperature, the the water boiling before the contents of the jars is uh, properly up to temperature. And if that happens, then we have a, a differential in temperature which might uh, crack the glass in the jars, which is not what you want. So. Cold water brings slowly up to the boil. Might take an hour. Might take an hour and a half. And then we all know. Then we then we know that everything will be uh, coming up to the same temperature all together, which is and then and then jars won't crack. Um, so slowly up to the boil, which will take about an hour, hour and a half, which is fine. So I've just shaken the the jars as well uh, before I put them in, just to make sure that there uh, there's there's the stock there's enough stock in each of them. So jars are there. I do have big pans and I do tend to do, do things in big batches because if I'm doing if I'm doing one portion of something I might as well do 10 that's what I was kind of think so jars are now in there that's all secure so favorite green bucket you might not be able to see it but just top up with cold water and I'm going to put a lid on and then bring I'm going out so slowly up to the bottom I don't advise people going out and cooking at the same time but um, I'm Hopefully know what I'm doing by now uh, that I can do these things. I'm a bit busy today, as always. So I'll top up with a bit more water. So it's just over the top of the lids, so everything is completely submerged. And then like that. And then lid on and then slowly up to the boil and just keep an eye on things. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's coming up to the boil. We'll check the temperature and then we'll put it on a, a really low heat to slowly cook it uh, for about two hours and then that'll be fine. But we'll talk about that when it comes up to the boil. We'll do an another quick video on what um, what kind of temperature we want to be getting to before we start slowly cooking. 
Right, now the uh, pan is now uh, up to 80, 86 degrees. It's probably a little bit hotter down the bottom of the pan, uh, but at the top it's 86, which is a temperature which will have uh, killed all bacteria and anything um, in the, in, in what we call it, in the jars, so that's fine. As you can hear, it's, I refer to it as dancing, so that, so the water boiling is making the, uh, is making the jars dance around a little bit. Um, that's why we use the gloss, because otherwise it just, it starts to chip the glasses, chip the glass and potentially crack and break the jars. That's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, it's taken a lot longer than I thought. It like took two, two, two and a half, quarter hours to get up to temperature. Um, but I did, I went out, I'm always going out. Um, I put it on a lower a lower temperature than I probably would have done, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the lid back on, move it onto a, a smaller gas uh, stove uh, jet, and uh, turn the temperature right down. And it's just a case of, of keeping uh, that temperature at about 90 degrees for two hours. And then what that will do is I'll cook everything in the jars, completely sterilise anything, and then I'm going to after two hours uh, I'm going to let I'll turn off the heat and let it cool down naturally. Um, you can take the jars out after two hours. Uh, the only problem is they're hot and I wouldn't advise uh, taking things out of like jars out of hot water it's a little bit cumbersome and a little bit dangerous so what I'll do is I will turn it off after two hours let it and let it cool down overnight completely and then I'll take the jars out uh, but that should be fine but that's so so that's it kind of moving around but you don't want it moving around as much as that so as long as it as long as it stays at 90 degrees it only needs a little bit of heat to keep it at that constant temperature because it's quite a large volume of water and there's going to be a lid on it it will keep with a tiny amount of, of, of flame it will keep at 90 degrees for two hours no problem so it's quite an efi a, a efficient way of cooking once you get it up to temperature i think that's it that's it for now uh, we'll come back later uh, when i turn when i turn the gas off and i'll let it go cold it, there is a few spots of um things come to the come to the uh the top of the water i think that's more a case of anything that might be on the on the outside of the jars rather than the jars cracking if the jars crack you know about it because you get lots of debris coming to the top of the um, top of the water like vegetables and things i wouldn't advise um taking all the jars out and replace and, and cleaning it up and replacing the water if you get a cracked jar it's just it's just a bit of a, a hassle and then you're then dealing with um, hot jars and you need to match the temperature that you're going to put the water back into so it's just a little bit difficult so I just get if, you, if, you, if, if a jar cracks and breaks I just tend to leave it um, and then deal with it afterwards uh, and then that's just a case of taking all the jars out giving them a wash once they're cold and just being careful of any any kind of water or anything like that but I've, that's happened in the past and it's, it's always been fine um, but as long as you bring things up from from cold all the same temperature cold slowly up to uh, like uh, 90 degrees boiling point then that's it's going to be fine um, it shouldn't be a problem with the jars unless the jars have got, already got cracks in them uh, or chips anyway but you know cold to hot and with cloths in between there shouldn't be any kind of problems like that you can actually buy special pans to do this in uh, especially steamers and things um, I wasn't going to was, I've got big pans so I'm not going to buy another big pan which I can only use for one purpose I'd rather have a pan like a big stock pot like this that I can use for lots of different things rather than just buy one pan for one specific specific um sound like I've got a stutter it's a specific I can never say it specific job I'd rather have a pan that I can use for a stock pan or anything and then also cook uh, uh, preserve uh, do preserved jars in it as well okay that's that's fine I think that's it for now anyway there will be more there always is so there we go um, two and three quarter hours later, uh, I lost a bit of track of time, so it's doing for a little bit longer. Uh, but two and three quarters hours later, uh, they are ready. Um, there's a little bit of uh, scum on the top of the water, which just means that they've just expanded and contracted and pushed a little bit of the juice out. But that's fine, that normally happens. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm now, I'll leave the lid on, it's really hot. I've taken one out, so I'm going to have one for my tea um, just to test it, and I'm hungry. I can't bother doing anything else. Um, I'll leave the lid. I'll put the lid back on, and then I'll leave it until um, tomorrow morning, until it's all completely cold and it's just easier to get them out. Take them out, um, give them a wipe down with a cloth, uh, and then they'll be uh, they won't be cold. They'll be they're good to be stored for at least two months. Well, at least two and a half months now so far. Um, that's fine. But yeah, um, 
for just an, a lesson on uh, cooking things in jars in um, in a pan of in a pan of water if you like keeping things in the cupboard whenever you so they're there whenever you want to uh, whenever you're hungry there we go i think that's it probably probably not there might be something more maybe i'll do another video tomorrow morning when i completely cold but we'll see right everything is now cooled down and i pulled all the jars out of the pan they're all properly sealed um, there's no loose lids, there's no cracking in the jars, the, all the lids are secure and they've, they've formed a vacuum which there's, there's no movement in the lid uh, either up or down so you know that they're properly sealed uh, and there's vomica and, and they are properly preserved. Fingers crossed, always fingers crossed. Uh, all the lids were good and everything was clean, everything and it all was up to the right temperature so everything, everything will be fine. Um, there was just a little bit, uh, the water was a little bit dirty because uh, obviously some of, with expansion and contraction some of the liquid was, was pushed out of the jars which then went into the water so I've just given the jars um, a clean uh, on the outside and dry them off so they're all fine um, just a note on jars I to buy jars it's quite expensive so what I do is I buy foods that I'm, that I'm going to actually buy but I buy them in jars that uh, I want to use for preserving. So roasted red, pep roasted red peppers came in these jars. Uh, so, and they're a nice size. So if I'm buying roasted red peppers, I buy them in that size jar. So I don't have to buy the jars. I just have to buy, I just have to replace the lids and that's quite a uniformed uh, lid size. So they're quite, dead easy to find on Amazon and all those types of places. So I choose things that I'm gonna buy in jars according to the jar that I'm gonna use afterwards. Um, so, whereas if you take a bigger jar like this, to buy those, they're really expensive. But if you go to cash and carries uh, and like wholesalers, you can buy jars of pickles that size, jars that have got pickles in them that size for about three pound fifty. Whereas to buy that jar uh, from, I've never, I've never really looked hard enough. I'm sure you've been able to find them quite cheap, but they're about eight or nine quid buy something that size with a lid so I kind of think it kind of may if it makes sense to buy the pickles in that jar and then use then keep the jar it's even more economical to buy the jars and throw the pickles away and then use the jar than actually buy the jars brand new I wouldn't recommend that because I don't like food waste so I do buy jars of pickles and I keep them in the fridge and they last a good couple of months but I do purposely buy them in big jars like that um, so I'm going to eat the pickles and then I get the jar for free, you know, so that's that's kind of what I would recommend I won't re recommend buying things and then throwing the food away. That's incredibly wasteful But to get big jars like that um, that you know where they come from uh, That's that's what I would that's what I do um, There are places where you can buy big jars. Uh, you can source your own you can uh, like uh, restaurants and things if you talk to them nicely uh, they want to they will save you jars and these because they have to people have to pay to throw things away these days so if they can get rid of them uh for free then that's a good thing you know certainly a restaurant that you trust or a delicatessen things like that they've got big jars glass ones obviously plastic are no good but that's what i would also source as well you can get them from um like facebook marketplace and things like that but do you are you really going to trust who you're buying from you know what I mean? Or the other alternative I would say would be to ask friends and family to save the jars and uh, collect them when they finish with them. Collect them, even if they're not the right size, take them out of politeness um, because people will, if you say, if you start dictating what kind of jar that you want from people, they're not going to save them for you. But if you take all the jars that they've got and then just simply recycle the ones that you don't want, that's what I'd do. But anyway, that's a lesson on uh, preserving. Don't have to follow that recipe, I don't think at all um that works for just any old um just meat on its own and it works that method works for vegetables uh, soups and anything if you are going to preserve soups don't put any um dairy products in because it has it starts to ferment i don't know why there, are, there will be a reason why it happens but i've always found if i have if i put uh, milk or cream in soups and then preserve them they always start to ferment and they always go off quite quickly so um the only things I don't preserve in jars is anything that uh, dairy product wise and that I'm, I put dairy products in like milk and cream and yogurt and things like that. But everything else, meats and fruits and, uh, and vegetables, 
all preserve really well in that way. And the same with uh, pulses and, um, and beans and things like that. They all preserve really well that way as well. Uh, they cook from cold to a hot method rather than cooking something and putting the jar. I probably will do a, 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 a video on that at some point, but I, that's, that's my favourite way of doing things. But anyway, that's it for now. There will be more. I'll forget as soon as I, I, I turn the video off. But anyway, that's it for now.